Hey guys, it is Josh from the Leaders Per Channel, and today I'm bringing you guys a review on the Nikon Coolpix L840. And before I start this review, I want to let you guys know that I broke this video into several parts, uh, into times. So if you want to see like the video and picture test, uh, those will be on the time at the screen right now. Uh, if you want to see like how to connect it to Wi-Fi, uh, basically it'll all be down in the description below with all the different categories and times to skip to. But anyway, let's just get right into the review by seeing what's in the boxes. So I got a Costco bundle box, uh, there's the box itself, along with the camera bag, the camera bag strap, the 16GB SanDisk SD card, and also the camera box. And inside the camera box, there's the camera, the camera neck strap, the manual, the lens cover, and four Duracell batteries. So now I'm going to go over the exterior of the camera and tell you guys about all the buttons and features that it has. Now first I'm going to start off with the 38x optical zoom lens. Uh, this thing is huge and I'm always trying to be really careful with it and I make sure to always have the lens cover on uh, just because I feel like I might crack it if I'm not careful enough. Next you can see there's the orange autofocus light in the center of the camera. As you can see on the left side uh, there's one of the two zoom sliders which I don't use that often uh, and also the snapback zoom button which I'll go over later in the video. Also on the left side is the button to open up the flash, which does require a little bit of force but works well, and I have to say that the camera looks great when the flash is open. So now onto the front, there is the orange flash indicator light, which I'll be going over, uh, and also the navigation buttons on the front, which I'll be going over later as well. And this is probably one of my favorite parts about the camera, is the tiltable LCD screen. You can just get so many different angles on this thing um, without having to like bend your back over. Um, so this thing is just great for taking like intricate pictures of something low or high. Now onto the right side we have the AV out, mini HDMI and the DC in 5 volt plugs. Uh, I'll only be using the DC in plug uh, because I don't want to run through my batteries and the only other way to power this camera is with the DC in cord. Now one of the biggest cons about this camera are the batteries and in the manual it tells you that you can only use Nikon certain batteries uh, which will cost you $40 for all four of them. Uh, unless you buy disposable batteries so instead I went out and bought an EH67 AC adapter which in the manual it tells you that you have to get the EH66 AC adapter but I bought the uh, and I'll leave the link in the description below where to get the EH67 adapter but I bought it so I don't run through my batteries as fast on the top of the camera there are the two metal hooks for inserting the neck strap as well as the left and right stereo microphones which I'll be testing in the video uh, there's also the speaker which isn't very loud but you can hear well um, there's a Wi-Fi button to connect to your phone and also the on and off button and then above that there's the shutter button and the second zoom slider now for that orange flash indicator button whenever you press down on the shutter if the orange indicator stays still um, that means that the camera is ready to take a picture with flash and if it blinks that means it's not ready now on the bottom of the camera there's the tripod mount, some information about the camera, and the SD card and battery slot. Now in turning the camera on, make sure not to leave the lens cover on or else whenever you try, the lens won't be able to open and it'll tell you lens error. Try again after turning on the camera. Um, so you just have to take that lens cap off before turning it on and then it will work. So now for the information on the screen, as you can see in the top left corner, uh, it tells you what mode you're in, so right now I'm in scene auto selector. In the bottom left corner, it tells you the battery and ISO. In the bottom right, uh, it shows you how many pictures you can take and uh, the, l the length of video you can take in one sitting. In the top right corner, it tells you if a vibration reduction is on, how many megapixels you're going to use, and the status on recording. So for the different camera modes, uh, you press the green camera button under where it says scene. And it gives you a lot of different options. Uh, if you go into the scene selector mode, you just have so many different things to choose from, uh, depending on where you're shooting or what you're shooting at. Um, there are also ready to add filters, um, just a lot to a lot to add there, a lot of customization, um, as well as smart portrait, which basically uh, can like detect faces um, when shooting, as well as the short movie mode. Uh, I haven't really spent that much time with it. And then there is auto mode. Now this is probably where you're going to be spending the most time with this camera. Uh, just customizing to what you like. Um, when pressing on the right button on the menu selector, you can see that you can change the brightness, uh, the vividness, and the hue. Uh, now one of the things that you're probably going to be changing the most is the vividness. Because uh, this camera has a tendency to take like 
sort of washed out pictures without being able to see the color that well. And being able to change the vividness and brightness can really uh, change the way your picture looks and the way that you might like it. Uh, you can adjust macro mode. Um, there's so many different settings for the flash. Um, but pretty much you're going to be spending a lot of time in auto mode changing it, changing this camera to the way you like it. It also has a self timer mode for taking pictures. So when going into the picture settings uh, while in scene auto selector mode, the only thing you can do is just change the quality and size of the picture. Uh, but other than that, there's pretty much there's nothing you can really do. Um, now going into auto mode, you can change pretty much everything about it: uh, the autofocus, um, the white balance. Uh, this camera can take up to seven pictures per second. Uh, you can change the ISO all the way up to six thousand four hundred. Um, and also, this camera does have a manual autofocus, which is pretty cool. You use the navigation buttons to select what you're trying to focus on, which is a pretty cool feature for this camera. Now into recording settings, uh, you can change the different frame rates and what quality you'll be recording in. The highest frame rate that this camera will capture is 60i, which stands for 60 interlaced. Um, this means that it's better for like sports or fast moving things. Um, and the highest FPS that this camera will record up to is 30. Um, but anyway, you can also change the wind noise reduction um, as well as the movie vibration reduction and the autofocus. Then for Wi-Fi settings, here you can change everything that you need uh, when connecting to your device. Um, you can change if you want a password for your Wi-Fi, uh, whatever you want, but that's pretty much it for the Wi-Fi settings. Now to the setup options for the camera, uh, there's really nothing in here that you can't change. Uh, there's a lot of options to change and choose from, uh, but that's pretty much it for the menus. Now to change how loud the speaker is, and this did take me a while to figure out, um, but whenever you're watching a video, if you turn the zoom slider to the right, it'll turn the sound up by one. If you turn it to the left, obviously it'll turn it down. Uh, and it only has three different sound levels, so it's not very loud, but you can hear it in a quiet environment. Now connecting your camera to your phone, um, once you hit that Wi-Fi button, uh, it will show the name of the Wi-Fi that it's making and then find that network on your phone uh, and after you connect to it uh, the camera will say negotiating and then the next step to that is you have to download the wireless mo mobile utility app uh, on the Google Play or App Store it only takes up 1.6 megabytes um, and basically after you download that uh, it'll give you an option to either take a picture from the camera or view photos if you choose to take a photo, it'll basically give you full control of your camera uh, from your phone, which is pretty cool. Um, and it saves that picture to your phone and the camera. Um, and then if you go into view photos, uh, which is my favorite part about the app, uh, you can basically download any pictures that you've taken from the camera and move them onto your phone. And if you guys are wondering, uh, this Wi-Fi is not like a real Wi-Fi. Uh, you can't like go browse the internet or anything. Uh, it's just like a connection to the phone and the camera. Now for the lens, this thing can get dirty pretty quick if you don't keep the cover on it. And I don't really recommend using your shirt or clothing to clean it off. And instead use a designated glass cleaner. Uh, I always keep one in my bag. Um, and I always rub in a circular motion around the lens to clean anything that's on it. Uh, and pretty much... But I recommend you carry a designated glass cleaning cloth. Now I'm just going to demonstrate how bright the flash is, uh, and this flash works very well. Um, I'm going to press it here, and you can barely see because the flash is so bright and very fast. Uh, it only lights up the bottom corner of the screen, and there's the picture. Now I'm going to show you guys how the snap back button works, and this is only useful when zooming in. Uh, so you can see if I zoom in on the manual here, and when I press the button, it puts like a little black box around where I'm zoomed in to show me what's around where I'm zooming in or what I might not be able to see. Um, I'm not really sure what you can actually use this for. Uh, I really haven't used it all that much. Um, but I can imagine there's something out there. Uh, you can see if I zoom in closer and then press it. I can also take a picture while uh, snap back and also take a picture while zoomed in as well. We're just talking quick about the vibration when zooming in or out. Uh, it does have some vibration to it um, when zooming out and in, uh, which can affect your audio by being able to hear the vibration. Um, but the lens is very long, um, which is cool to get those mega zoom pictures. That's pretty much it for zooming. 
Now, one of the biggest questions I ask myself is how do I get through my picture slideshow without having to use the left and right navigation buttons? And if you push the zoom slider to the left, uh, you get you start to see more and more pictures show up until you get all the way to the calendar. And then if you go to the right, it zooms in closer. But I really had to take some time to figure this out myself. So now going over the camera neck strap quick, um, on the top where it rests on your neck, there's like a small piece of leather, and then on the sides it says Nikon and Coolpix, and it also in the manual tells you how to attach it to your camera. Going over the lens cover quick, uh, you pinch either side to take it off or put it on your camera, um, and then it has a small lens strap uh, which you can attach to your neck strap. And just to show you guys how the tiltable LCD works, uh, here I'm going to take a picture of these logs and, and without having to bend over or hurt my back, I can just tilt the uh, LCD and I can see what I'm taking pictures of and change the settings if I need to, which is really great for this camera. And one of the cons on this camera is if you're trying to take a picture from far away and if you don't have a tripod or your hands are sort of shaking, um, the pictures probably aren't going to come out that great. Uh, unless you are holding the camera very still, um, they just won't come out looking very great and the quality will probably decrease uh, the further you get. So as far as vlogging goes, it isn't really a great vlogging camera. Uh, you can hold it pretty well with the uh, large handle that it has. But yeah, this is pretty much it for vlogging. Now I'm doing a quick slow motion test with the camera at 120 FPS, uh, but it can only record in 480p. Uh, but this is just me moving some water around, and it actually looks really smooth, but the quality is just downgraded. The camera can also record times 2 video uh, in 1080p. I'm not really sure what you're going to use this for, but it's there. So right now I'm testing the left and right stereo microphones on the camera, and I might look and sound a little different because I got my wisdom tooth out a few days ago, uh, as well as my braces. Um, but before you buy this camera, I really recommend thinking about what you're going to be using it for. Think about how it could help you in using it for, in that way. And you might be asking, why don't I just use my phone camera? Um, but the answer to that question is that a full-size camera such as this one, you just have a lot of options and customization uh, in the pictures that you take and the video that you take. And that's really where a full-size camera has the advantage over a smartphone camera. And if you do buy this camera, uh, be ready to spend some time learning all the settings and how the settings affect your pictures, uh, how to make your pictures look better using like the brightness and vividness and auto mode. Uh, it just takes some time to get to know how to learn and use this camera. But I really recommend this camera to uh, budget filmers and like budget YouTubers uh, who are either trying to upgrade their camera gear or just start out a YouTube channel. Uh, I also recommend this to people who are trying to learn photography, uh, maybe take a photography class with this camera. And if you're willing to put in the time to get to learn how to use this camera, uh, you can really get some great videos and pictures. But anyway, that's pretty much it for my review. Uh, one of the last things I have to say is that you just really need to spend some time with this camera, be able to make your own settings, learn how to use the settings, uh, and how it can affect your pictures, and how to make your pictures look better. Um, but anyway, I, I bought my camera for $220 uh, from a Costco. It was a bundle, but you can get this camera uh, for $200 off of Amazon. Now for the picture and video test, I did make a whole trip overview using only this camera. So if you guys want to see that, I'll leave the link in the description below. I recorded the whole thing with this camera only. Um, but depending on what you guys want me to do, I can make uh, another video just going over um, testing the picture and video. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video.